I start to myself. In today's video, you're going to learn popular video editing techniques from horror, TV, and films. This video is brought to you by Storyblocks. Get unlimited stock media with my link below. Let's jump on in. Poof. I hope you guys like the costume here. Don't worry, I'm not going to do the witch voice throughout. So the first effect that we are doing today is the haunted mirror effect that you saw in the beginning. Now this trick is used in so many horror movies and TV shows, and it's actually just a simple cloning effect. First, you need to film with your camera on a tripod and you need to shoot two different shots. One of me normal acting shocked and the other haunted witch version of me in the mirror. But now the hard part of filming is over and now let's jump into Premiere Pro to see the magic in action. I've got both shots imported here. First, I'll put these two clips on top of each other in the timeline with the haunted shot on top. With the top video selected, let's go to Effect Controls tab and under Opacity, let's pick the pen tool. Let's draw a mask around the mirror portion so we can see both versions of me at the same time. All I need to do now is move the top video to get the timing right and we're done. I also added some quick color gradings and some natural camera shakes to help sell the shot. So this is pretty simple stuff, so it's really up to your creativity here to really help bring the shot to life. <laughs> Now let's move on to something a little bit more creepy. So what's the best way to tell your audience that somebody is possessed? It could be in the eyes, of course, or it could be in the way that somebody is acting possessed. But for this effect, we're gonna talk more about the eye effects. For this example, I'll be using some stock footage from Storyblocks, but instead of having to go to find and download from their site, instead I can use their Storyblocks free plugin directly inside Premiere Pro to download as much as I want. And it's much faster. Here I have a close-up face footage in the timeline. To get started, we're first going to duplicate the video and place it on top. With the top clip selected, I'll grab the circle mask and line it up to one of the eyes. Back at the Opacity tab, let's click this button next to Mask Path to let Premiere track the eye movements for you. Now you'll probably have to do some manual adjustments depending on how complicated your shot is. Now do the same for the other eye. Once that's done, now we're free to do whatever with this layer and it would only impact the eyes. I can grab this color balance effect, for example, lower the greens and blues to zero, bump up red to the max, and now we have the demon eyes. But before we get any crazier here, we have to remember that as humans, or oh, witches, we close our eyes, we blink. It's just natural. And right now this is a problem because the effect should be under the eyelid. To fix this issue, let's duplicate the video again. And on this layer, we're going to draw a mask around the eyelid keyframe the mask path and follow the shape manually. This shouldn't take long since we don't blink any more than just a few frames. Now we're ready to try some more stuff with the eyes. How about adding something inside? Like this blood dripping asset. Place this under the layer with our eye mask. Let's disable the top layer by pressing shift E so we can see the blood asset underneath. Move it so it covers both eyes. To make the blood only appear in the eyes, we first gotta nest it. Add track matte key effects to the nest and in the matte section, pick the video layer that has our eye mask. Now, if we re-enable the eye layer, the blood will only flow inside of the eyes. Let's make it look more real by selecting the nest, change blend mode to color burn and also add a tiny bit of Gaussian blur. Pretty spooky. <laughs> We're not done with the eyes just yet. How about the classic black demon eyes effect? Now you could easily make our eye layer black with Lumetri color and just be done with it, but it looks kind of cheap right now. So we need to add back in some of the light reflections. To get this, we need to duplicate the video again, but this time we're going to mask and track just the iris. Now we can use Lumetri color again to lower the shadows and bump up the highlights so the reflection shines through. What I'm showing you here are just ideas, but if you have a good mask, you can pretty much do anything you want, like this. Now you've already seen me use the Storyblocks plugin to download stock video, music, and sound effects even directly in Premiere. It's so cool. The best part is this is just the icing on the cake. Not only is Storyblocks the sponsor of this video, they're also the place where you can get unlimited professional assets, even animation templates for Premiere, After Effects, 
and Final Cut Pro. And did I mention that all the assets are royalty free? And there are no restrictions on where you can distribute your finished projects. They make licensing so easy. By subscribing to their monthly or annual plan, no hidden fees by the way, you'll get unlimited downloads on everything that Storyblocks has to offer. And you'll also be able to access their library directly inside of Premiere Pro or After Effects just by downloading their free plugin from the Adobe Creative Cloud desktop app. Special thanks to Storyblocks for supporting this channel and making things like these plugins to make it easier for us to get our assets directly in our programs. So I was gonna jump scare you, but then I decided to Ooh. Gotcha! Jump scare is definitely a classic trope in horror films, right? But after seeing dozens of horror films that have this jump scare, I actually appreciate more subtle jump scares that are less predictable. So let's try our own. I got this stock footage of a guy walking alone in a forest. And I'm thinking of putting a ghost in this spot just behind him. So when he moves out of the way, you get a smooth reveal. Let's start by grabbing this green screen ghost footage and placing it behind him. Let's add the ultra key to the ghost layer and color pick the green to get rid of it. As you can see, the biggest problem here is we need to put the ghost behind him, not in front. Now I could fix this by masking him manually, but that'll take too much time. So instead let's use Runway's AI tool to do it. If you don't have Runway, but you have access to After Effects, I recommend using the Rotor Brush tool instead. So I've got Runway open up here and let's select Remove Background under AI Magic Tools. Here we can just import our footage and now with just a few clicks on the subject, Runway will generate this pretty perfect mask for me. If Runway is selecting any unwanted areas, you can change the mode to Exclude to get rid of them. And once we're done, you can then export this out as a green screen asset or as an alpha asset and import it back into Premiere. In Premiere, it's as easy as placing our alpha mask subject on top of all of the layers and there we go. Now we have a reveal. And of course, I'm cutting the ghost video out here so it's gone by the time he moves out of the way again. Let's also add just a little bit of camera blur so the ghost blends in better with the background. So it turned out pretty good, but nothing's complete without the proper sound design. I'm going to grab this forest ambience and some horror movie sound effects from Storyblocks and let's see what we can do with them. First, I'll add in this forest ambience, but it sounds way too close up right now. To fix this, I'll throw in the studio reverb effects, click edit to see all the options. Let's skip all these confusing parameters and let's just go to the top and pick this large vocal preset. Let's turn down dry to zero and wet up to 100. This will make it so we only hear the reverb. Now let's throw in this eerie sound effects to get that unsettling vibe going. With all the ambience out of the way, it's time to have our classic horror impact sound effects to complete the jump scare. I'm going to place this just a few frames after the reveal to let the audience get a chance to see the ghost before we hit them with the sound. Finally, I got the cinematic swell sound effect, which would normally be used to build up to the jump scare. But in this case, I wanna use the sound effect to build up the tension before the ghost disappears. Because when the guy covers up the ghost again, the audience doesn't know what the ghost next move is. So this sound effect is a perfect buildup to that next move, which in our case is gone. So that's all for the terrifying edits in this video, just in time for all of your Halloween edits. And if there are any spooky edits you wanna learn how to make, just leave a comment below. As for now, stay creative and keep creating better video with Gal. <laughs>